Good morning. It's a splendid Wednesday morning. Though it works, but what you see in Lagos, the weather is always unpredictable. And this morning in Super Just Sports, we have a lot of unpredictable stories that will interest you. This morning edition is just myself alone in the studio. So I'm going to be taking your calls as the show progresses for the next 15, 20 minutes. A lot of topical issues to talk about from the home front to the abroad side of sport. This morning we'll be looking at the trouble besieging the AFN. Threats have been sent in, sanctions have been sent in. Uh, if they don't return the 130k, AFN might be sanctioned. Aside the fact that IWF has set aside all records made in Asaba. We'll look at that critically. We'll also talk about the Super Falcons with their great exploit right there in the Wafu Women's Cup, scoring almost 20 goals. They pipped Mali 2-0. They'll be meeting Ghana, their arch rivals, who are the Black Queens of Ghana uh, tomorrow. We'll also look at the list that uh, Genetra has just sent in. Uh, a lot of issues have arisen on that particular list. Some players have made that list. How they made that list is still a mystery to some of us who are in the sports circle. But we'll look at that list critically and review um, what Genetra is really aiming to do right there in Egypt. We also look at games that are coming up today, um, MPFL games, but that which is of great interest to us right here on uh, Sports and Sports is the game between Rangers, International Venable, and Bender Insurance of Edo State. We also look at tennis, where Serena Williams has pulled out from the Italian Open reason. We'll let you know. And uh, we'll go to the EPL. You won't believe it, what each team gets from number one to number 20 in their position in the EPL. Yes, we agree that um, the top team cuts home almost 149 million pounds. But this year, there's a difference, and that's what we want to bring to your fall. Yeah, transfer gist is already coming in. The season is ending in some leagues, and uh, gist are already falling in about key players moving from one club to the other. We'll focus on two this morning, top, top players uh, moving from one club to the order. My name is Prince with Ovisa and the comedy joke. It's been a while. I've been on set. I'm happy to be here this morning to talk sport. Let's start straight to hell, but this time we're going straight to athletics. The Athletic Federation of Nigeria has been told to return 130,000 US dollar that was paid into their coffers. Now, the gist is this, ladies and gentlemen. Um, there's a grant of $15,000 that was supposed to go to the AFN, but suddenly out of nowhere, 130k move into the AFN account. And as at the time this issue came up, the sport minister did promise that uh, it will be looked into. As I speak with you, uh, AFN has not really given a clear cut indication of who got that money, how that money was spent, and where the money is right now. But the big question is the sport minister did agree that they will look into it and make a reform. Now, the go-round news in town right now is that the sport minister should take the blame because the AFM is a parastatal under the ministry. Now, the issue is this. If that $130,000 is not returned back to AFM, there's a letter circulating that AFM might be suspended and they might not, and this is the dangerous part, they might not partake in the IWAF event or other event organized by the IWAF. Now, during the week, IWAF slammed a big one on Nigeria Athletics. Just last year, August, it was uh, noted that as about 2018 was a marginal success. But just overnight, IWAF says every record, every record that was made in as about 2018 is set aside. It's a big setback for Nigeria Athletics. And I just hope that with all this trouble building, we will find a way to get it ahead. Quickly away from that, let's come back to football. But this time, we're talking female football. It's been glaring news right there in the Waffle Cup, where our Super Falcons are showing that they are truly prepared for the World Cup coming up in June in France. They've scored almost 20 goals. The first one was a clear wiping of Niger Republic, 15-0. That was massive. But right now, they pipped Mali 2-0. They'll be playing the arc rivals which is the Black Queens of Ghana, and that is a game to look out for. As I speak with you, the coach, Thomas Dianabe, believes that utmost preparation is ongoing, and these girls are really raring to go mentally, physically, and like they say in this part of the world, spiritually. But the big thing is, can they surpass Ghana? That's the question. If they surpass Ghana, they'll be in the finals, and the state of mind for the Women World Cup right there in France 
will be completely on board. But another question we we'll love to ask this morning right here on Spartan Sport is, are we really going just to be part of the number in France, or we can take this momentum we've created so far so good, scoring almost 20 goals? That's no kid. Uh, uh, um, that's no child's play, if you ask me. So, Super Falcons, go out there, do what you know how to do best, put in the goals, and get to the finals. Now, the big gist of this morning is the list that was released yesterday. A lot of issues have been raised, questions have been asked, and the names of those on that particular list that Janet Raw released yesterday, 25 of them, and six standby players. Some players, the question is, how did they get into the team? I'm going to give you a list of the players who actually made that Janet Raw. One of the gladding names that most Nigerians want to see, even if some top football administrators kicked against it, is that of Captain Mikel Obey the Trojan. Um, on that list as well, we have Francis Uzoho, um, we have Ikechuku Ezenwa, Daniel Akbeyi, we also have Lynn Balogun, we have Williams Ekong Trust, we have um, Olaino, Ogane Karo Etabo, Shew Abdullahi, Winifred Ndidi, uh, Chidoze Awezim, Odion Igalo, Kenneth Omero, Jumaila Collins, uh, Mikel Obi, which you see on your screen right there, Sam Ajayi, Ahmed Musa, um, John Ogu, Kelechi Ienacho, Samuel Kalu, Alex Wobi, Henry Oyekuru, Moses Simon. All right, Kule, good morning, Kule. Hello, Kule, good morning. I love you, the beautiful program. Hello, Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Hello, can you Go ahead, Kule. I can hear you loud and clear. Please, uh, yesterday, the, our women is super powerful. Yeah. Our, our women is super powerful. Play with uh, Mali. Mali. What is it called? 2 0. They defeated Mali 2 0. Yeah. They'll be playing Ghana tomorrow. Who are the scholars? Come again. Come again. Who are these colors? Ebere Uzochi. Ebere. Ebere Uzochi. Can you hear me, Kule? I can't get you very clear, Kule. Hello, Kule. All right, I'm not getting clearly very clear. Also, if you're going to call in this morning, you've seen the list of the 25 men invited to the Super Eagles squad. Do you think some of these players are justified? As I was saying, I was just giving you the names of the players that have been invited, but the surprising men in this particular list right now is Leon Balogu and Kelechi Hinacho. Let me quickly say this. Leon Balogu has played just five games for Brighton right there in England. And Kelechi Hinacho has scored just two goals out of 16 games he has played. How did these two players make it into the Super Eagles? Only Jeanette Raw can explain vividly to the massing teaming fans of the Super Eagles. Now, the preparation and friendly games for the Super Eagles is still ongoing, but that as it may be, they will be departing the shore of Nigeria come next weekend for their various campaign. But the question remains that Jeanette Rusty believes that his goalkeeping department still has some problem, where Francis Zoho, Daniel Akpeyi, and Ikechuku Ezenwa are standing in. Now, who will become the number one? The choice is still his. Within the same list, there are six standby in case any of these players in camp sustain injury. And these six standbys are Ikwein Utim, Valentine Ozowofo, Brian Idowu, Mikel Agu, J uh, Junior Ajayi, Theophilus Afekolai. These are the six players who are on standby uh, for the Super Eagles. We just hope that uh, each of these 25 men and the six standby that makes it 31 to reduce to 22 will definitely make us proud as we go up there in the land of the Pharaoh, which is Egypt. But one big question people are asking is, what role does Janet Raw wants to give to Mikel? He has not played some games. He's still the standing captain. 
Will he just be coming from the bench to play the games or he will just uh, play fully? That's the full list of the players that were invited to the Super Eagles camp right there on your screen. So you can call in, let us know what you feel, let us know what you think because it's going to be a complete x-ray of this particular team. We will come back in the afternoon for the sports be show. But this morning, let's feel your pulse. Away quickly from that, let's look at games that are coming in today in the MPF. L. One of the games that I'll be looking at is that between Rangers International of Enugu and Bender Insurance. Back then, a game of this magnitude is one everybody wants to see. If you talk about the pedigree of insurance and that of Enugu Rangers, there are two top clubs that have produced very notable players for the Super Eagles, then Green Eagles, very notable players for this country, the likes of Manolo Kala, uh, you talk about Edema Fuludu, just mentioned but a few. This match for today is a mouth watering one. And if Rangers can win to this game, they'll be leading the pack in um, Zone A of the MPFL League with seven clear points. They've lost three games on the bounce. They've not been doing too well on the road. We just hope that uh, with the woeful nature, Ben Insurance had carried on, they would uh, sustain that three points. All right, I'll quickly go on this break. And when we come back, Kule will be joining me in the other segment of the show. Do stay tuned. <laughs> 